Hello everyone, welcome back to The Budget Sportsman. Thank you so much for joining me on today's video where we are going to be talking about backpacks, specifically backpacks for mobile hunting, and more specifically, backpacks that can help you haul meat out of the woods. So a couple years ago, I made a video about these two backpacks right here, the Mystery Ranch Pop-Up 28 and the Mystery Ranch Pop-Up 38. That was probably about three or four years ago now, and these have been my go-to backpacks for that time. Really, on this side, the Pop-Up 28 is my workhorse. I'm a saddle hunter here in the east, hunting uh, primarily whitetails. And this has been just my go-to pack for saddle hunting here in the east. And I'll show you a little bit more about this pack in a minute. But I've also taken this backpack out west as well, hunted elk in it in a day hunting situation as well. And then on a rare occasion when uh, I need more space than the 28 has to offer, maybe I'm hauling some heavy uh, bibs and coats and that kind of stuff then sometimes I'll make the transition to the 38 but really the 28 has been my go-to. So recently I started wondering is there something better on the market? I mean I've loved my pop-up 28 but is there something better than that on the market that would be a good upgrade for me and something that I could share with all of you. So I started trying to get my hands on a couple of different backpacks and I have three of them that I want to show you today and just kind of compare them to what I'm used to and see if they're right for you. But before I dive into the backpacks that I have on the table today, I want to make something really clear. In this backpack comparison video, I was only looking for backpacks that are able to haul meat out of the woods. See, over the last couple of years, what I've determined is that when I get a whitetail down on public land, back in deep somewhere, I would much rather quarter that on the ground and pack it out in quarters, much like many Western hunters do, than to actually drag that thing for even a half a mile or a mile. Trust me, even a small deer, I just hate dragging, and so I'd rather quarter it and pack it out. All right, here on the table are the three new packs that I wanna show you today, and we're gonna go through them one by one, but I just wanna introduce them quickly. Here on the far left is the Miss Your Inch Pop-Up 30. This is basically the update to the Pop-Up 28 that I've been using for quite a few years. This here in the middle is the Alps Outdoors, uh, the Elite 1800 pack, and then over here on this side is the Eberly Stock X2, which I know is really popular with a lot of saddle hunters and Eastern Whitetail hunters. So before we dive into these three packs, I do wanna go in a little bit more depth into the Pop-Up 28 that I've been using for all these years so that we can get a fair baseline of what I'm used to when we start looking at these other packs. All right, so here on the table, I have the Mystery Range Pop-Up 28. This has been my go-to for the last couple of years. Let's take a quick look at it. First thing you're gonna notice is you get a nice pocket here on the front of the pack. It opens up and inside, it's gonna probably be hard to see on camera here, but inside you've got these two mesh pockets. Now I really enjoy these compartments. Uh, right there you can see an old tag from last year. Um, but I put my wallet in there, I can put a battery bank in there. There's a lot of things that fit really nicely in those two little mesh pockets. And also other hunting accessories that I often keep in this particular pouch. Up top you have the brain what I'm gonna call the brain, kind of the lid of the whole, uh, whole backpack here. And I often store snacks in there, maybe a spare release, uh, phone charger, a lot of stuff I store right on top where I wanna be able to get easy access to it when it's hanging in the tree. And then of course it has these two zippers, they're already open, but they come down toward the front in a V pattern here, and when you unzip them, this lid lifts up. Now one of my complaints about this backpack over the last couple of years is when you load this up with a bunch of stuff on the, the top here, when you open it and then you're trying to get stuff out of the inside of the pack, it wants to just kind of fall closed on you and it makes it a little bit difficult to access the big items that are down inside your main pack. Of course, you got a main deep compartment here. This is your main compartment. It goes all the way down and as a self-filmer, I typically keep my camera in here, my camera arm, uh, sometimes a spare layer if I need to. It also, again, hard to see, but it does have a water bladder compartment right there. And then uh, it's it got a really nice padded waist belt. It's got an adjustable yoke system. You can see that on this side, I've mounted a gear hoist to pull up my bow. And on the other side, this is extra, it does not come with it, but I bought an extra little molly pouch that goes on there. And I just keep some small accessories and things that I wanna keep close by my side when I'm hiking. Now, the real main feature of this backpack is that the backpack pulls away from the frame. So there's these two clips at the top, as well as two on each side. I've only got the two done on one side right now and it pulls away and it's nice and adjustable. There's all kinds of straps where you can adjust this and put a really big load right up close, tight to your back and carry out a lot of weight. Now, for me as a saddle hunter, the last couple of years I've been running tethered skeleton sticks. This is a four pack. A lot of times I would only run three unless I knew I really needed to get high, I might carry the fourth. Probably gonna be switching sticks this season, but I just wanna show you these uh, because it's what I've got here on hand and what I've been using. I'll lay those sticks in there across that 
uh, load carrying shelf like that. I'll put my platform on top like that, and then I'll just buckle this bad boy up, both on the top and on both sides. And that, those straps right there, they're gonna keep everything nice and in place. The platform's in place, the, the sticks are in place, and that's how I'm gonna carry, carry, carry my gear into the woods. The heaviest items, uh, you know, right here, there's probably eight, eight and a half pounds of sticks, another four pounds of a platform right now. Uh, that's almost 12 pounds right there, and that's gonna keep all of that weight nice and tight to my back. Everything is really secure and really easy to load. And that's the reason why I've really loved this backpack. But again, it's not just for being able to carry the saddle, the sticks, the platform in and out. Uh, there's so many things you can do with this. If you need an extra layer, you wanna carry a jacket, you can shove it in there, or you can shove it in alongside these extra straps and cinch it down. But again, if you wanna haul meat out of the woods, this pack right here is phenomenal. I've done it many times. I've uh, put meat in bags and hauled meat out of the woods in this same shelf right here. Now, to be fair, a lot of times I have had an extra person with me, oftentimes carrying the pop-up 38 or another backpack where they could help take some of this weight from me, but I don't think you would have any trouble at all if you, know, if you can handle the weight and fitting your sticks, your platform, and some cut up deer meat or bone, bone in quarters in this backpack and carrying them out and not have to drag your deer. So this is the pop up 30. Obviously the 30 implies that it is slightly larger in carrying capacity than the 28. And so I'm not gonna spend a ton of time, but I do wanna compare the differences. Again, you've got an adjustable yoke, you've got the pop up frame, really nice, really padded waist belt. Again, you're not gonna get any waist belt carrying pockets here. Those are something you'd have to add extra but it is a Molly system, so you can either buy from Mystery Ranch and buy their little pouches or just buy any kind of a pouch that has Molly attachment to it. Now, one of the things that I really like that they did about this pack is on the old pack, the entire pack was held up by connecting to this bar right here. Now, this bar moves as you pop the frame up and down, and depending on its height, sometimes you couldn't really get the bag up and tight. It kind of wanted to sag a little bit. You'd have to sort of cinch it up from the bottom to support the weight, but you weren't really supporting it from the top. What they've done on this, and let me pull away the frame here a little bit. Hopefully you can see this, but if you pull away this yoke, the top is held up by these two clips right here. You unclip it and pull this material over the top and pull it out, and then you can pull your pack down. I really like that because this piece right here always is the same height. And the way that wraps around there, it supports it from the top really, really nicely. Now, another change that they've made on the pop-up 30 here is that this top bar is actually curved. On the old pop-up 28, it was straight. Now, most of the time that wasn't a problem, but there are certain situations where if you wanted to put your head back like this, or maybe if you wanted to belly crawl with your backpack on, where that bar did end up hitting you in the head and making it a little bit difficult. So I think this curved bar is a really great improvement. Now, another thing that they did in the pop-up 30 that's really unique is they put this quarter 20 tripod thread threaded bolt right here through this top part of the frame. You say, why would they do that? Well, there are a number of things that you could use that for. First of all, you could screw on a little Y, uh, you know, rubberized Y that would be a rifle holder and you could screw that on there and you could have a nice prop. This is adjustable. You can bring this bar up and down. And so you could prop your rifle on that. You could mount a spotting scope on that or maybe a binocular mount on that. Or if you're like me and you're a filmer, you could mount a 360 camera over your head or a, some kind of an action camera and maybe make a bracket out to the side, but it would mount to that, that tripod thread. There's a lot of great uses, and I think it's kind of a very unique feature that I've not seen on other backpacks. And both of those features I've shown you so far, actually all those features so far, I really like, I think are really great upgrades as well. Now, another really great upgrade here is that the pack opens the opposite direction. So the main, pocket here, instead of the zippers coming down to the front and the lid lifting up, the main pocket opens with the zipper on the top here and this lid folds down. So now you're going to be able to get access to this pocket and the zippers aren't even all the way down here. There we go. The zippers are all the way down. If you have weight in this top pocket, it's going to want to fold down and you're going to have easy access to your compartment there. And to me, that is a really, really big upgrade. They kept the top, what I'm going to call the brain. They kept the top pocket here nice and deep can fit a lot of stuff in there, a lot of snacks. But we start to come down to the cons now. What they did is they removed this front pocket that was on the 28. Now, if you're kind of a guy who you don't care about a lot of organization or a lot of pockets to keep things separated, 
then this might be a great pack because there's some really awesome upgrades over the 28. But the fact that they removed this front pocket is a big deal to me because I really needed both of these pockets to keep the smaller items separated from the bigger camera gear inside my, my main compartment there. Now, another thing that they changed here is you probably saw that on the top, on the pop-up 28, there was the two clips on the top, and then there was two clips down each side. But instead of using a quick release buckle like was on the 28, they went to this G-hook right here. And it's a captured G-hook, it has a gate on it, so you have to squeeze it a little bit, the gate pops open, and then flip it out. Now, it's, I think I know why they did this. It's sort of for the same reason as up here. On the pop-up 28, sometimes there was just a little bit too much of a strap there that when you didn't have anything in the backpack to take up the space, you could never really cinch it all the way tight. With this method, they definitely made it so that you can cinch that all the way tight, and it's gonna work really well, but I do like the buckles a lot better. These just are a little bit more time consuming. They're easy to get off, but it's a little bit more fiddly to sort of feed that buckle back up through the loop. It's not bad, but I just wish that they would have stuck with the original buckles. They worked well for me. Now, another thing that I want you to notice here, let me pull this back up over the top, is on the pop-up 28, the strap that went right here, which would be, uh, let's see, this strap right here, used to go out around the water bottle holder. So if you wanted to put a water bottle in this pouch right here, Sometimes it was difficult to get it out when you had everything cinched down and a lot of weight in there and you really were cranking down on those straps. It was hard to get it out. And then if you did get it out, now you created a bunch of slack in this strap uh, where now your, your load isn't secured as tightly. So what I really like here, and I'm hoping you can see this on camera, but they made this hole through the water bottle pocket here. And so you can actually put this strap back behind your water bottle, pop it out through that hole, and then connect it right there. And so now when you put your water bottle in there, it's actually on the front side or the outside of that strap. Another thing I should mention is they put Molly down the front here, they put extra straps across here. So if you need to strap stuff to the back side of the pack right here, a gun or a bow or who knows what, extra jackets, there's a lot of extra straps that weren't on the original Pop-Up 28. There's also these straps here which would help to lift the load from that side. Um, if you do that and you wanna buckle these up top here, they are going to get in the way of getting into your main compartment and you're gonna to have to undo those. So for me, they are removable and I would probably just remove these straps. But again, the big con of this pack to me is just the lack of organization. You've got one huge compartment and one extra pocket on top. The next backpack that I wanna to talk to you about today is this Alps Outdoors. This is their Extreme Elite 1800. Now, if I remember correctly, you can get this same frame with several different pack sizes. And so you could actually take this pack off and get a larger size pack as well. They've got a couple different pack sizes. But this pack is very similar in size to the Pop-Up 28 that I am used to and is quite a unique pack. Let's start by looking at the pockets that it comes with. Just like the Pop-Up 28 or the Pop-Up 30, they've got these water bottle holders on the outside right here on both sides. On this side of the pack, you've got this little elastic uh, pocket here. It's not super big, so I would be careful what you put down in there. It's got a lot of compression straps all over it. You're going to be able to get a nice tight compartment on this, nice, nice tight compression all over this. And then one thing that's interesting here is you do get the same kind of a thing. You get sort of a, a brain, so to speak, top lid. There's some interesting padding here in the lid as well that I think is going to protect your gear. And then when it's time to open up the main compartment, that zipper's behind the one I just showed you. And what's really interesting about this is it, they put big, long zippers on this. And so you can really open up this pack. If you wanted to lay it down flat on the ground and get to something way down deep in your pack, you can open this thing way up and really get to what you're needing at the bottom. But the other thing that I appreciate about this is while there's not a ton of pockets on the outside, it's very similar to the 28, or excuse me, very similar to the 30 in that it just has basically the brain pocket and then the big pocket. They do give you this pocket as well, so that's nice, but not quite as big as on the 28. But inside of this right here, they give you these three different mesh zippered compartments. And for me, that's perfect for putting tags, putting a kill kit, uh, putting snacks or spare, uh, spare hunting gear, maybe a spare release. And then inside this side over here, I'll turn this around, hopefully you can see this, there's two more mesh zippered pockets on this side. So all in all, you get five different mesh compartments inside this backpack. And for me, as a, an organizer, as a guy who likes to have a place for all my stuff, even stuff that maybe I don't access real often, but it needs to be in its place when I need it, this backpack, I think, is a winner as far as that goes. 
Um, it does have a water bladder holder here and a port to bring out the hose on either side, depending on your preference. Now, something that just stood out to me right now that I hadn't noticed before is that on the Mr. Ranch backpacks, you just have a little string for the zipper pull tab. Whereas on this Alps backpack, you actually get this little rubberized handle kind of thing that's on the string that makes it really nice to get a grip of. It keeps that string open for you to grab. Now, a couple other notable points here is if you open up this backpack, down here at the bottom, there's a zipper and you can pop out this little holder right here. So you can stick your, the butt of your gun in there or you can stick the bottom cam of your bow in there. And of course, there's a compression strap up here and so you can carry your gun or your bow. That's included, it's not extra. And it's got a nice zippered compartment where you can sort of fold that thing up and get it out of the way. Now, if you don't want it, if it's a little bit too much bulk, it's something you're never gonna use, you can actually remove that. And then of course, you'd get another little zippered compartment there. And then moving on down the backpack toward the bottom, you've got this other zippered compartment. You open it up and inside of there is an included rain fly. Again, something that's included, you're not gonna have to spend extra for it. And you're just gonna be able to pop that out and pull it up over your backpack as needed. It's nice and stretchy. You can stretch that over the whole thing and it comes with an included rain fly. I think that's a nice touch. Now, if it's something you say, hey man, I don't need that thing. I don't want that thing. Again, it is removable by just disconnecting the strap that's right here, it's just a bit of Velcro. Now, another thing to note is it does have an adjustable yoke, which is really nice. It's a very easy system to use and to adjust. But then also I wanted you to notice that it comes with two, again, they're Molly pouches. These are removable, but it actually comes with two pouches, one on each side, and that is also included. So in comparison to the Mr. Ranch pack where you're gonna have to buy a bow holder, you're gonna have to buy a, um, a rain fly, and you're gonna have to buy extra pouch accessories I think you're getting a lot of features on this backpack and I think it's quite the interesting backpack. Now, one of the things that makes this backpack a little bit of a frustration for me is again, instead of using those uh, quick release buckles, they use G hooks all the way around. Now, on the Mr. Ranch 30, they use quick release buckles on the top and G hooks on the sides. And I think that was a good decision because what I find here is on this Alps Outdoors pack, these ones here, especially on the top, you get the weight of the backpack hanging down and they're tricky to get off. They really are. And so to me, and again, I should mention these top ones are gated, but these side ones are not gated. They're just regular G hooks. And so let me pull them all off. All right, and there it is opened up. There's two more at the bottom. Now, if you just wanna use this backpack for hauling meat, then I don't think that the G hooks are really an issue because you're only gonna be using it once in a while and a few extra seconds to sort of get those G hooks hooked up is not going to be a big deal. But if you're trying to use this like I do for sticks and a platform, then I think you're gonna have a little bit of a frustration here because these G hooks are just a little difficult to get in and out, especially when you're trying to pull a little bit of tension, you've got to really create some slack so that when you're trying to put these back in, you're not fighting it. I mean, it's not hard. I feel like I'm being nitpicky here, but it just seems like it's more fiddly than what I'm used to. And even just trying to get it back out, again, it works, but I really prefer the quick release buckles. On the Miss Your Ranch packs, there's a piece of fabric that comes all the way down, creates a shelf, and then connects to the backpack. But because this backpack is actually created to be able to change it out on this frame, what happens when you disconnect these bottom G hooks is that the whole backpack actually is removed from the frame. Now you do have these two straps here at the bottom that need to be removed from the front. But what that means is you don't really have that shelf at the bottom. All that you have are these two straps right here. So that creates a little bit of a different system for packing your sticks in your platform. Now what I would do here is I would probably just not disconnect those bottom two buckles I'd place my sticks in. So then what I would do with my platform is I would either just put it right here and then strap everything down. Or one thing that I noticed is that they have these extra straps right up here connected to sort of a row of Molly. Now these straps, I guess, are just extensions that could be used on any of the compression straps around the backpack. But if you wanted to, you could actually just use these, loosen them up just a little bit. And you could actually use them to just sort of hang your platform right here. And then you can just close up this backpack 
as needed with extending these straps up like that. Now another unique thing about this pack, I already mentioned that you can remove the backpack from the frame, and I believe you can actually get different size packs that you can put on this same frame. But what I find really interesting is once the pack is off, you actually have this whole meat carrying pack all on its own. So if you were in a situation where you wanted to haul out a quarter or a whole animal, and you wanted to leave the weight of your pack behind, then you can actually take the pack off, or maybe you take one load to the truck and leave your pack at the truck and just bring the frame. But now you've got a meat carrying frame. You still have a water bladder holder right here. You have an extra little pocket right here if you just need to put tags or your keys or your wallet or something like that. But you've just got a slim, trim, comfortable backpack frame that you can haul meat out, or if you, even if you just wanted to haul sticks and platform without a whole backpack, you could do that on this frame. And the final pack that I wanna show you today is the Eberly Stock X2 pack. Now I know this is a really popular pack with a lot of Eastern whitetail hunters, a lot of saddle hunters, because it is very versatile. And if you're a pocket guy, this is probably going to be the pack for you. It does have water bottle holders on both sides, nice elastic holders there. One thing about this pack that is different than the other packs is it's not really adjustable for your torso. What you get is what you get, but what is interesting is that this back part here, you can probably see, it doesn't pull apart like the other ones do for meat, but just the way that it's mounted there to the frame, you get this airflow kind of thing on the backpack there. It looks really, really nice. The straps are a little bit thinner, not quite as padded as on some of the other backpacks, although the waist belt does look pretty padded. Uh, the, you have molly on both sides of your, your belt here, so you can add straps or packs or holsters or whatever, but they are not included. So let's go ahead and start looking at some of the pockets here. You've got a bunch. Again, you have the same sort of a deal. You've got the brain up here. Nice deep pocket on the top. And when you unclip these two buckles right here, then you can flip that out of the way and get access to your main pack. You've got these two, I'm gonna call them bat wings. I think that's a term that comes from uh, Badlands and their pack, but we're, I think that's what they are. We'll call them bat wings here. You open them up and you've got these big long pouches. Now, these pouches are probably gonna be great for those guys who wanna use something like a spotting scope out west and those types of things, but there's a lot of uh, things that you could put in here, a thermos, a number of things. Now for me, I'm just gonna reach over here on the floor. I was really hoping that these would fit my camera arm. This is my camera arm that I've been using for the last couple of years, but it does not have the tripod head on it right now. And it does fit without the tripod head, but if I'm gonna use it like this, I'd have to take off the tripod head for every single hunt. I've got a fluid head because it is just simply not going to fit in there unless I'm gonna like let it hang out the side. So for me, that was a little bit of a disappointment because I was really hoping that my tripod with the head, or excuse me, the, the camera arm with the tripod head would fit down in one of those bat wings. You do have a bat wing on both sides. They're the same on both sides. And on the bottom and the inside here, you get another zippered pocket there. It's a little bit of a stretch fabric, really, really nice. And then right down the middle here of your main pack, you get another stretch pocket and it's deep. It's not like the one on the Alps pack. This is really nice and deep pocket there. I think that'd be really useful, maybe throwing rain gear in there, hat and gloves, a number of different items. Now the top is a drawstring top, and this is a pretty good sized pack. There's a lot of space down in here. And what I love is that you can either access it from the top, or if you wanted to lay it down, maybe on its side, you've got this big zipper, and this is not a separate compartment. This is a zipper that goes down into your main compartment here. And so there's two different ways to access it. Again, if you wanna get something down on the bottom without digging through, that is a great way to do it. Now, this is a, a pack that is customizable. I'm just telling you what, there's Molly all through here, there's Molly here, there's Molly down on this strap, which I'll mention more about in a minute. There's Molly on the outside of this pouch right here. There's Molly on this side, there's Molly on this side. There is Molly um, over here on the lid. So if you wanna add Molly uh, accessories to your pack, this is the pack for you, I'm just telling you what. Now, if you remember earlier in the video, I said that a, a backpack had to be able to carry meat if this was going to be a pack that I would add to my video. Now, this pack is very different. It does not separate from the frame like all of the other packs that we looked at earlier in the video. This one really is advertised as a meat hauler, but it's gonna use this shelf right here to support the weight of your meat or whatever that load is that you're gonna carry. And then it has these bat wings that are gonna be able to come around and compress everything down really nicely. Now. One of the concerns that I have about this is that the bulk of your weight is going to be that meat or it's going to be your sticks and your platform. And what this does is it puts it further away from your back rather than putting all that weight nice and close to your back. 
The other thing that this does is it means that you're gonna be compressing that meat down against everything that's in your pack. So if I've got a camera in here and I'm gonna compress all of that weight down into my, my camera, rather than compressing all of the, the pack down against the meat, which I think is the better option here. Now, another thing you're gonna notice is that I've chosen with the sticks that I've been using, the Skeletor sticks, to pack them horizontally with these other packs. They sit nicely down in the bottom. It keeps the standoffs outside of the pack. The standoffs aren't poking into the material. But if I did that on this pack, I certainly could fold this up around the bottom like that, and I could put my platform on top, but it would be kind of difficult to close these bat wings. So I think this would be a better system to haul your sticks vertically. But if I haul four sticks vertically right there, it gets to be a lot. It's really sticking out deep. This is gonna have a hard time wrapping up around. And so I don't think that would be the best option. I suppose maybe, and again, I've got four sticks here. So I suppose, may, suppose maybe the answer would be to stack two side by side. And that may be a better solution right there. But I also wanted to show you what it would look like with a smaller set of sticks, which I think is probably the answer here. I've got a three pack of tethered one sticks and those fit pretty nicely in there. And I think that would be the way to go is if you had a smaller package of sticks. Again, I could sort of put my platform there. And certainly once I fold this down around, could I do that? Absolutely. Could I fold these bat wings around and buckle them up? Absolutely. All right, there it is. But you can definitely see the difference between a smaller profile stick like the tethered one stick and something that's a little bit bulkier like the tethered skeleton sticks. This certainly works, but again, I'm just telling you that this weight is going to be further away from your body. Now, another option here with this pack would be that you could put your platform in first, buckle it down with this load shelf, and then take your sticks and stack them on top with the bat wings. And that would be another way that you could pack this up with these heavier sticks. All right, so what are my final thoughts on these three backpacks? Well, let's start with the Pop-Up 30. This is a great update to the original Pop-Up 28 that I have. There are some things that I really, really love about it that are true upgrades, the curved top, the way this buckles up here in the top, holding it in place, the way the top lid folds down, a lot of really, really great features. And I still think that the Pop-Up series from Mr. Ranch is the best option for being able to simply just open this up and put meat or your sticks and your platform or whatever it is that you wanna carry in this load shelf. To me, the pop-up series is still the simplest and most refined method to do that. Uh, to me, if you're interested in that, I think this is a great option if you're willing to accept that it doesn't have that extra pocket like the pop-up 28 did, and if you're willing to accept that the size are gonna be G-buckles rather than those quick release clips. And I think there's pros and cons of both ways. Either way, I think the Mystery Ranch pop-up is a solid option. Now, this is an expensive backpack. They've gone up over the last couple of years, and if that is a deal breaker to you, but you like the pop-up series, you may just wanna look for a used pop-up 28 or maybe an old stock pop-up 28 and see if you can't get a better deal there. Either way, I think the Mystery Ranch is a solid option. The Alps Outdoors Elite 1800, I think is a solid pack. And I think that while it's not a cheap backpack, I think you get a lot of features for the money. You get that drop down bow or gun holder, you get the rain fly, you get the pouches on your waist belt, you get the ability to take this pack off and put a different pack on the same frame. And you even get that cool feature where you can take the pack off completely and just use the frame for load carrying. I think it's really neat. It's got some great organization with a lot of those mesh pockets inside. I think, you, again, this pack really provides a lot of value. Now, one of the problems that I do have with this pack is a couple of problems. One is, it just is very strappy. There's straps all over the place because of the versatility of it. There's just a lot of straps and it's not quite as streamlined as the Mystery Ranch pack. And also, I'm not quite a big a fan of the way I have to load sticks and a platform in this as I am the Mystery Ranch pack because of those G hooks that are a little bit too tight. And finally, the Eberly Stock X2. I think this is a really awesome, very versatile backpack. It's got a ton of storage, which I like. I love organization and pockets and storage, and it's got a good bit of that in this backpack. For me, it was a little bit of a bummer that it does not fit my camera arm with the uh, head in one of these bat wings. But overall, you've got a ton of storage, you've got a ton of molly for a great versatile backpack, and you can set it up how you want. For me, the downside of this pack is that it's just not gonna carry the sticks and the platform in a way that's quite as easy for me, quite the way that I really want them to load in there. And while it can haul meat, I think you would want to do that with your backpack completely empty. 
because if you put a bunch of stuff in your backpack and then put the meat on the outside of that, you're gonna have all of that meat hanging further away from your back, making for probably not the most comfortable carry in your life. And again, you don't have any sort of adjustment on the yoke system, so that's a little bit of a disadvantage as well. But overall, if this backpack fits your needs, it's a quality backpack with a ton of storage and I think a pretty versatile system as well. So let me know what you think down in the comments. Do any of these backpacks seem like they're gonna fit your needs? Which one is your favorite? And what have you been using out in the whitetail woods? Or maybe you're a Western hunter. Let me know what you think as well. Until next time, remember to get off YouTube and get outdoors into God's great creation.